Wow, this is the funkiest dashcam footage ever. <laughs> anyway, I am currently driving towards uh, a friend's house, a friend who has an inspection pit that I can use to get under my car. And, uh, well, you guessed it from the title of the video. Uh, we're going to add an extender battery to my car. So in order to add an extender battery in the back of the car, we need to route cables from the front of the car where they have voltage buses to uh, all the way to the rear. So uh, yeah, let's get on with the video. So this is under the car, and let me see, uh, this large bracket thing uh, is the front suspension and, well, the entire subframe here. Um, here is the front of the battery, so that's the rear and that's the front of the car. Um, that's the battery connector, and as you can see there is no cable. Uh, there is a fairly small cable running from there to uh, there. This is the motor controller. There is a uh, very similar connector on there. And that cable we have removed. Uh, of course, first we remove the 12 volt uh, battery. Or we didn't remove it, we uh, removed the connection. And on this cable we will be splicing a uh, second high voltage cable and there is uh, above the battery, so above here, there's a little tunnel going all the way back and through there we will be uh, putting these high voltage cables. And well, this is that cable. <laughs> it's uh, it's really not that long. This is the high voltage bus um, on the entire car. That's it. And at that point it became really hard to record anything of value. Uh, it took us hours and hours to do everything we wanted to do. So yeah, what you're looking at right now is the spliced cable. So we cut open the cable. It's actually two 35 millimeter squared cables, which is fairly thin to my liking, but I guess it's just a very sh short cable run. Uh, soldered and crimped on a flat high current cable. It looks like copper sheets and that's actually what it is. It's like three one millimeter uh, thick copper sheets bundled together. Drove an M8 brass bolt into it and that is what the cables are connected to. It took about I guess three and a half four hours to route the cables from uh, pretty much the front of the car where the um, uh, motor inverter is to the back of the car where I actually want to put the cables but I can show you the end result. Ta-da! Uh, those are the cables. <laughs> That we have painstakingly routed through the through the car. Actually, if you're going to do this, uh, it's probably ten times easier to just remove the entire battery pack and uh, route the cables uh, just plainly. Because I'll show you what we did. 
like an electric car, the uh, battery is down uh, at the bottom of the car itself. So uh, the entire floor uh, has a battery in underneath it. Uh, but, of course, the car has to route some cables and stuff uh, to the back. So there is a tunnel. You can see there's a little hump. And in that hump, this is actually a flap you can pull off. There's an emergency disconnect in there, but there's also like a bunch of cables and um, ducts. And uh, that is where we actually routed uh, the high voltage cables. Now, of course, uh, just splicing into the high voltage cabling is not enough. Uh, you need to uh, also actuate some relays because if there's high voltage on the car all the time so if you just connect the batteries directly to the high voltage bus first of all the pre-charge resistor will burn out very quickly like in a couple of seconds but more importantly uh, it would actually create a dangerous situation and the car won't start so that's no good now fortunately uh, here in the dash area um, you can see that little silver box that's called the VCM or vehicle control module <laughs> that apparently does all the signaling uh, it's got about a hundred ish wires coming out of it including the battery relay or the battery contactor contacts uh, and EV can so I splice those off this was a very annoying thing to do, although not quite as annoying as um, <laughs> pulling those uh, high voltage cables through the wood tunnel. That was really annoying. Um, and I put on a Molex Minifit connector, and now I have this counter connector and a couple of LEDs, which we're going to use to see if we can actually view the contactors actuating. Yeah, that means we can put a cable on there and route it through the interior trim. Well, I pretty much pulled out all the right hand trim, or at least the bottom trim. So the cable can run pretty much through the gutter here. To the next gutter, and then around the seats there's some trim here that I left in place it actually has to go over the wheel well here and then it comes out there um, behind the charger like you can barely see it it comes out somewhere there this is the wheel obviously and then I let it over the charger and down behind this uh, steel plate I didn't even remove the plate I just routed it there and it comes out underneath the um, uh, cover here, like the anti-noise cover. I'm going to uh, reinstall the trim and install a connector on the end of this uh, cable. And then I'm pretty much done. Uh, I guess I'll add the contactors as well and see if they actuate. Now because some people have had trouble directly driving relays, um, from the contactor connections. I made a little board that just drives relays from the 12 volt supply. So uh, these are just two MOSFETs uh, with a Zener diode and a resistor on the gate. These go to the relay signals. Uh, and so I can make sure that these MOSFETs are never overdriven. If there's like a low dump and suddenly there's 40 volts on the bus, um, there is no risk of these gates blowing up and the contactors failing shut which is pretty bad because when a MOSFET fails, it fails uh, short. Yeah, so this will turn on the relays. Uh, this is like a relay driver, essentially. And on the contactors themselves, uh, I will just put a uh, little freewheeling diode on the terminals directly. Well, I connected everything up and I will now put this microphone next to the contactors and see if they actuate when I uh, turn on the car.
Sounds like a success. Well, and that's it for today. Uh, I put everything back together. It looks like a normal car now. Um, the next step is getting a whole bunch of batteries, putting it in my trunk, connecting it up to the contactors and the high voltage cabling and seeing if the car drives any further. Uh, if that works, I will be building my permanent battery, which will be um, permanently installed underneath the trunk area in a uh, special enclosure, uh, so weather sealed and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, next time we'll be probably driving a very long way.